Oh, well, welcome everyone to a new episode of Duncan and Bo Slash Fiction. You did not just shame me by letting that audio leak out. Uh, yeah. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, Duncan and Bo Slash Fiction, a uh, tiny little division of Duncan and Bo Come Correct. Um, so we have been, <laughs> hey, it's all been leading to this, Duncan. Um, <laughs> we've been, of course, going through uh, Slasher Season 2 uh on the heels of going through slasher season one yes um and so what we're going to be doing today is uh we will be doing a couple of movie reviews up front if you're new to the show and then we're going to answer a couple of questions yep and then we're going to talk about this uh slasher episode which as uh if you if you missed it duncan described as maybe his favorite episode I think it may be my favorite episode. So it's nonsense, and and for that reason, uh, we'll get to it. Like we're uh, yeah. I think I think I think there's enough for me to parse out why it's my favorite. So if you hang around, I will justify it. Now, that doesn't take as bad, but this is the one where I kind of feel like the show started to just for a second just for a tiny little second, believe it's a real show. So we've been so busy concentrating on does Ren think that he's a real boy that we miss the fact that sometimes Slasher thinks it's a real show. So yeah, it, yeah. Well, all right, we'll get to it. This is all, this is all going to be great. Okay, I'm very so excited to talk nonsense. about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. Is all nonsense. <laughs> when, I, when I was uh, doing my notes for this episode, there were a couple of times where I was like, Oh my God, this may be like, to your point, this may be, the funniest episode oh god yeah yeah and the, the way this ends is amazing because they're still they, they give away a bit of vital information right but 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 bo i think they still think the audiences still think that ren's a real boy and that's the bit that i was like oh glorious yeah. absolutely glorious so yeah yeah so uh without further we'll ado, pick it apart we're gonna pick it apart yeah, it's gonna yeah, be fun yeah. So let, let's get into this. Uh, let's talk about some movies, good and bad, that we've been seeing, one apiece. Uh, Duncan, what, yes. what you got in the chamber? Uh, I mean, <laughs> can I do double bad this week? Is that... <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. It's almost unprecedented, but yes, of course you can. Yeah, let's let's do double bad. Um, I will say, as he aside to something we've spoke about uh, kind of briefly off the back of the last episode, uh, I have in the interim watched that Censor movie, uh, movie out there, so I can't speak today. Um, I've got hay fever. For those in Scotland or the UK, uh, just now we are getting a... I'm not going to complain about it too much because I know America's getting a lot worse than we are, but we're getting a heat wave at the moment. Um, which has just made my head feel like mush. I don't do heat. I don't like heat. That's why I live in Scotland. We had an agreement. I stay here in this godforsaken pit of misery. And you give me cold weather and no sun, right? And it mm -hmm. feels like someone's reneging on their part of the deal right now. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, I did check out Censor. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. You were right. I have theories about that movie, which made me like it even more. Uh -huh. uh, and very much looking forward to checking it out again. So I would have spoke about that, but I have put out an entire episode of my podcast dedicated to that. So people go away, listen to that, and that's how you pimp your stuff. Um, I have, however, been to the cinema twice in the last week. Both. No kidding. Twice. Two advanced screeners in the UK, not from the States. You guys have, you guys have had uh, the... <laughs> The Forever Purge, which is the first movie I'm going to be talking about uh, maybe two weeks before we got it. And the other one I'm going to be talking about is, that's right, Escape Room, Tournament of Champions. Uh, the follow-up to the wildly disappointing and or uninteresting Escape Room, which I checked out a couple of days ago. And it's on, it's on the shit list for worst movie I've seen this year. So, um... Yeah, really. So, all right, all right. Because oh, I yeah. I thought Escape Room was also quite dumb. Oh no, this one, this one, this one is almost actually in parts makes Slasher look well written and competent. Well, that is a bold statement, sir. It isn't really when you watch it, 
Um, trust me. I, 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 there was a certain bit was, I was like, they've spent money on this movie. Why has no one read the script? <laughs> What's going on here? Anyway, let's start with, with uh, The Forever Purge. Um, a movie that was supposed to come out last year during the, I believe they like to call it the tensions in your your country. You know how like uh, in Ireland during the whole uh, then just before election and it was obviously delayed a year uh, and as such the messaging's just a little bit out, just a little bit out. I think they were anticipating a second Trump term, um, which... I don't know about that. Uh, anyway, um, this movie is set technically after election, election year, which was the third Purge movie. This is technically the fifth one, but the fourth one was the first Purge, so it was the prequel that you always wanted and delivered nothing. Um, so this one, the the founding fathers have been, the new founding fathers, sorry, have been re-elected. So we basically just undone what we did in the last movie, right. which I kind of love. At the end of the election, you're like, yeah, we've got new parties in. It's going to be a progressive future. The new Purge movie kicks in. It's obviously four years later. And they're like, yeah, we just said, fuck that. So we just elected the old ones. In. And their first action, Bo, in office, bring back the Purge. Well, sure. Sure. Yeah, because everyone loved the Purge. Um, so the, the movie... Um, this time we're, we're in Texas, so we're down near the border with Mexico. We're following two illegal immigrants who essentially cross the border uh, and start working um, on a ranch. Just Well, they start working on a ranch and then we fast forward. The movie knows that no one gives a fuck about that. Sure. So we fast forward to the night before the purge. Everything's kicking off. Um, purge kicks off the following day and... It goes through, a lot of nasty things happen, as you would expect in The Purge, which we fast forward all the way right through that Purge night because this is the forever Purge, Bo. Um, and we jump into the following day where The Purge hasn't stopped. It's continued on. It's no longer contained to one day because it has bred an uh, entire uh, subset of the nation full of ardent right-wing theologies and... and methodologies and well this sounds downright uh, political duncan it sounds very political and their whole job is to claim america back for the americans uh, and to make america great again although they don't see those words but they do just kind of anagram them up um and yeah so they are essentially hunting uh, as many uh, immigrants as they can right would you say they're hunting humans whoa whoa <laughs> you're a bad man um, yeah, just like the misfits <laughs> the twist in this movie is that for six hours Canada you know your hearty maple syrup drinking cousins to the north I've heard tell uh, yes yes and the, the the Mexicans are going to raise their borders and allow asylum to anyone for a six hour window Oh, okay. And our people are trying to get to Mexico. I so, I get it, Duncan. It's like yes. uh, uh, they're flipped doing a little it. juxtaposition there. They flipped it. They flipped it. They did flip um, it. They, they flipped it. I, 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 they flipped it and reversed it. Oh, eh? A little bit of Missy Elliott for you out there, just flipping it and reversing it. Although I think she was talking about having sex. Um, I think and, that's uh, right. Uh, the, yeah, the best I could say is uh, the the forever purge fucked me right off, Bo. Um, yeah, it's it's just like the script is horribly dumb. I mean, horribly dumb. It's it, at this point now, and I know some people go, "Well, it's a purge movie." Yeah. Yes, it's, it totally is a purge movie. But we're now we're now dealing with um, what I would say is complex complex tensions and messaging in the states, right? Mm -hmm. And this movie resolves them by saying everything's fine in Mexico, uh, which I think is a troubling message. <laughs> it's <laughs> certainly, yes, that seems to ignore uh, perhaps some <laughs> issues. 
That's uh, just one or two. Uh, yeah. like if, we're, if we're talking about corrupt governments, um, yeah, I, I mean, um, that seems to be part of the message. And I know some people are going to be like, well, it's a satire. Because I've read this as well. It's a satire. It's not really a satire. Um, Americans don't do satire well. I've kind of realised that. I think and you have like small pockets of it. Yeah. But the rest of the I think that comes with the age of the country. I think if you've been a country for like more than 600 years, you are surprisingly good at satire. But if you're still a youngin, like a couple of hundred years, it, it isn't quite there yet. The script is bad. The effects are great. I mean, it's an action movie now. We're, we're, we're no longer doing horror. That's that's long been gone since, what, the second movie? I think we're yeah, trying to I mean, paper that out. Yeah, they've essentially become these kind of like horror action films. Yeah, it's a, it, I mean, it's like an exploit. It's essentially a big exploitation movie. It's a big budget action exploitation movie. And the action stuff is really, really well done. Um, and the piece, it's an hour and 45 minutes. And I'll tell you, it felt like it, it was an hour it flies in. They understand we need to get these characters on the road and move the story quick, and they do that. But that's about the only positives. Uh, its messaging is dumb. Its script is horrific. Um, some of the setups are terrible. There is a love story injected into the middle of this movie, which doesn't make sense, goes nowhere, and is dropped very quickly. Um, <laughs> That's everything you want out of a story. I literally just, I was like, what the fuck is going on? It just didn't didn't make sense. And then, like I say, the messaging at the end is, well, our characters escape for a new life in America because they are being, for lack of a better kind of description, headhunted by the cartel that are murdering people. And the end of this movie's resolution is, Mexico's great. Um, which I'm just like, right, I understand America has the parts, right? I understand as people with different opinions and all the rest. I understand we are... Because the movie's now... By the end of this movie, they've expanded everything so far out because this was supposed to be the final installment. Right. But now they're talking about another two. But it's went so far now, there's no room now. They have to... It's expanded so far. It needs, we need to cool it down. We the cooling down period. Um, yeah. It's just, it's not a good movie. It's, and I'm sorry if you're a Purge fan, but I, I like big dumb movies, right? I really like big dumb movies, but you've you kind of you you kind of grounded your movie a little bit, right? And you can call it the new founding fathers or whatever you want to call it. Um, and there are certainly what's weird about it is it was made before your. Um, your insurrectionist attacked your your capital, and it kind of feels like they predicted it. <laughs> like so, yeah. Uh, I just the the messaging's all wrong. Like I, I I can't. I'm I'm watching it and I'm like that. This is supposed to be a fun goofy movie, and then I'm seeing similar parallels to a lot of things that are happening right now, which sadly grims it. Um, and when you grimmed it, I then start looking at the messaging as bad. Plus, logistically, a lot of it doesn't make a lick of fucking sense. Like, even a little bit of sense. Um, one of my favourite scenes in the movie is when one character, there, there's a, like a, a battle happening down an alley in El Paso, right? And um, Down in the West Texas town of El Paso? Yes. I fell in love All, with Mexican government. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know where we're going with this. All uh, right. Um, so, yeah, the and this, like, but the town's on fire pretty much. Well, the city's on fire pretty much. And uh, one character who refers to his wife as mother, clearly a dig at Mike Pence, right? Um, so he's like, mother, call for backup. So she gets her radio and she goes, backup, backup, right? And she doesn't tell them where they are uh -huh. or how to get there, but we see in the distance the vehicle's coming to get them. And I'm just like, wait, well, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, we just didn't have time to, you know, ADR some additional things. Like, we're on the corner of... <laughs> couldn't give a fuck and lazy writing um i just like I, honestly i think I, that's I, in san francisco I, I think it is as well um so yeah it, it just wasn't it just wasn't good wasn't good however it was better than escape room that's uh, to, crazy to that all right all right Be, yeah like i said i my my experience with escape room like in the first movie i remember watching that and thinking like this feels like a good premise wasted and yeah. and was kind of an aggressively dumb movie. 
Oh yeah, I'd like horrendous and the dialogue. Remember, my, one of my things about that movie was there was, um, a, there was a, a line, and when I heard it, I was like, "Oh my fucking god!" An adult wrote that for an adult to say to another adult, and it's like um, something to do with computer games or something. And the guy says, uh, "I don't play computer games. I like to see grown women naked." Sure. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the line, and I'm like, well, that's like one. No one would ever fucking speak like that. Two, no man would have to quantify when they say women naked. Do not have to say grown women naked? I yeah, right. That's somebody overcompensating to some degree. Yeah, um, yeah it, like, but that, that was the level of writing. The the thing, Escape Room is just a, an amalgam of saw cube you know um it's, it's like all those movies and one thing together the premise being that you're in a escape room which is designed to kind of kill you uh essentially if you don't get out um and I, I don't know how much you remember of the end of that movie me and baz went to see it. baz couldn't remember much of the end of the movie yeah uh, I, which I is really handy because this movie has the balls in the first five minutes to give you a recap Pretty much says previously on. It doesn't say previously on, but might I mean, as well. Good have. for them. That's I need it for Escape Room. I don't remember much about that film other than. Oh man, it it's like as a as a full on previously on Escape Room. Um, so yeah, at the very end of that movie, there was two characters survived: the main chick and the guy she saved, and they'd worked out that there was this company behind it all. Uh huh. Um, and then. That was how we kind of saw things, but then you kind of got an after after credit sequence sort of thing, where Doctor Claw and his minions of this organization—I called him Doctor Claw because he talks like this. Uh huh. And he was like, petting oh, a well, cat. Yeah, literally the the most Inspector Gadget thing I've ever seen. Um, so the movie kind of supposed to start off from there. And that's where things kind of go awry, um, like right at the start. Um, I, I won't. I'll, I'm going to be doing a review of this, and I'll go into a bit of detail on it. But essentially, our characters decide that they're going to bring down this massive multinational corporation that has designed murder traps uh, and existed for many years undetected. Um, but they're going to bring them down because the police don't believe them, and they end up in New York because that's where that's where the company's based, and somehow end up on a subway car, which has some other people on it um and that subway car ends up getting disconnected and flung up a different kind of passage underground to a disused part of the the underground and wouldn't you know it Bo everyone that's in this particular contraption is a survivor of a different edition of escape room what yeah so there's now like six brand new People. Hence the tournament of champions. Well, this is the thing, right? Yeah. See, like, the character, one of the characters, literally says that three seconds after the train stops. She's like, oh, "It's like you were in the escape room as well, and you were, you were. What is this? Is this like, like tournament of champions?" And it's like, "Oh no." I like no. standing up in a theater and applauding when a movie says its own name. Well, it's a money shot. That's yeah. that's that's the, the the like that's the filmmaker literally like getting the last dream the semen out of his cock. Right, that's the, the that's Marvel be in the trailer. The Marvel style previs where they're yeah. like, Look, <laughs> we've got a character saying, What is this? A tournament of champions? Now build yeah. a movie around that. Literally it, right? So the um, this is all set under New York, which they appear to have converted to a giant escape room, which, once again, it just never would happen. Boy, that's they, a metaphor if I ever heard one. Yeah, it's just more and more nonsense, but it's not, it's like the traps are, see in the first one, there was a level of, right, we need to solve this puzzle to get out. Yes, some of them were a bit of a leap, but and they got more ludicrous as it went on, but they were still kind of grounded in the idea of this is an escape room. At this point, these are just like fucking cube death traps, like literally on that level. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but our, our our hero always works out like Indiana Jones grabbing his hat before the the you know the door comes down. It's always at the very last second, and like the story just gets dumber and dumber. The dialogue is fucking horrific, like absolutely fucking horrific. Um, and 
like me and Baz both went to see it together and uh, neither one of us liked the previous one. So we're not the audience for this. And I will preface this by saying we weren't the audience for this movie. And at the end, of it finished, I turned around and looked at him and Baz was like, that's utter dog shit. Um, and I was like, yeah, Baz, it is. Uh, so it's not just me, because like, I hated it. Um, but the weird thing about it as well, I don't know. I'm going to have to do a bit of research into this one. I think this one was shot during COVID, I think. Really? I think, and the only reason I think that is that it appeared that a lot of the dialogue had been um, post-production put in. Okay, so is it... you, you don't see a lot of the characters speaking to each other. The cameras are at weird angles, and then the dialogue's nice, crisp, and clear, but it's like all the way through the movie, and it's very level, and it was distracting to me. I, I pay quite close attention to sound design when I see a movie, and it's even more noticeable in a theatre. But there's just a lot of one characters on one side of the escape room and the other characters on the other. And all anarchy is happening between them, yet the character on the far side is very clear and audible, although we can't see her talking to the character that's in the room solving the puzzle. And it's like that all the way through it. And I can't remember if the first one was like that. The, the end of the movie is horrifically dumb. Like, to the point where, I mean, Ren isn't a real boy. I mean, we've known it's coming for a while, but I kind of saw this end in E, like, like from the start of the movie, and then it delivered it. And oh, you may have sold a ticket, my friend. No, but I'd, I'd say, wait for it to go to streaming, watch it. Um, well, I've if got... You kind of want to but i don't support it because they'll just make another one Sh sure um, uh <laughs> we need to stop the madness but we need to stop the fucking madness now because somewhere someone somewhere wants to keep making these movies this adam robital dude wants to keep making these movies and we need to stop him making these movies uh all right well but as, as someone who i like i've got one of them like regal unlimited passes so i can but it still constitutes that still I constitute a head that went to see it in the cinema. You're right. You're right. Uh, I'll just go Don't see the Forever it. Purge instead. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's I, I would if I was I, I didn't like either one of those movies, right? But I would recommend you see the Forever Purge before you see Escape Room Tournament of Champions. All right. Um, oh, such a bad movie. All right. right. What about yourself? Do you have any any light to shed on this this proceeding? I'll tell you, yeah, because even my bad isn't terrible. Uh, so, you, you so I'll start. I'll start with my bad. Um, just on a goof. I, well, I was actually cleaning out uh, the basement here, here in the America room, Duncan. I was cleaning <laughs> up the basement here, <laughs> and uh, you know, I've got a big, you know, hundred inch screen and a digital oh. projector down there. Oh, oh. and and a giant penis. <laughs> I mean, all of the above, Duncan. Let's not it's not lie to the audience. Um, but more importantly than my penis, Duncan, but what is when you think about it? Um, it's true. It's true. I, so, uh, you know, because I've been kind of cleaning out uh, the, the basement and whatnot, I was throwing on a movie and I ended up watching The Last Exorcism again, which I hadn't seen in, in some time. I, I mean... Yeah, it's it's great until the end. See, that's that was my thing. This, this is why it's not really a bad. Yeah. It's it it is disappointing because up until the very end of that movie, it has a great, like very grounded kind of vibe to it. Yeah, main and character that I think is brilliant. Very interesting main character. I don't think they do enough to sell this kind of restoration of faith of his. Yeah, yeah. And it does, but that, I, I kind of like that, though, because to me it just feels like he's shelling out one con because he can't make anything else for it by essentially setting up the next con. You know, he's made all his money he can out of being the fake exorcist, so now he's just changing it to I'll make as much money as I can exposing that I was a fake exorcist sure yeah you know what i mean which yeah, works yeah. for me in terms of the character like it's only at the end that he decides that he's going to try and find these quote unquote faithful yeah and it just seems to happen a little too suddenly for my taste yep yep um and and also it it just kind of ends with sort of a wet fart as, oh, dude, I, I've told you this story before, haven't I? I told you about my cinema experience for this one uh d tell it again because I clearly don't remember it all right, so I am. Um, this is like one of the first horror movies that both me and my now wife went to see in the cinema together. Um, 
like I generally would, we'd beat loads of movies and stuff like that beforehand, uh, but we didn't tend to go to horror movies together. And I, it's because I kind of warned her, I, I, I'm kind of vocally outspoken in the horror movie. Like if I see something that I don't like, I'll just, you know, I start to sigh. If something don't go is in that really, door. Yeah, if something's really badly written, I'll laugh. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't help it. Um, but this was our first experience with with uh, Duncan telling the movie and the cinema to go fuck itself. Um, so... <laughs> I mean, about, she knew you were Scottish, right? She did know. She did know. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd given an, enough away that she knew that. Uh, but we were we were sitting watching it at about 30 minutes from the end of the movie. That's when you see the pictures of the fire demon drawn on the wall, you know, like the hand-drawn fire demon things. And I turned to my wife and said that at that point, I was like, if this movie ends with characters running around in the woods and a fucking fire demon, I'm going to be so angry. <laughs> Um, and of course, I run around the woods at the end of the movie. The camera turns around, and oh, lo and behold, a strange fire like creature to which audibly in the cinema, the, the a Scottish man's voice rung out louder than it should have and louder than was intended. Oh, fuck off! All that. <laughs> I just, I, I couldn't contain it, and she's like looking at me going, Shh, and I was like, well, let's fucking look at it. Well, that so, yeah, um. I, I'm so annoyed because the the first two thirds of that film really, 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 really nail something kind of cool and fun and the kind of genres. And, and then it predictably ends up with characters running around lost in the woods, which is the end of every other fucking... Uh. Yeah. Yeah. A horror <laughs> expert Duncan McLeish says, oh, fuck off. Yes, <laughs> on the bottom of the case. If only I could have got it. If only I could have got it. Yeah, but it's a, it's a frustrating watch because it is that what could have been with a bit of, you know, a bit of someone else just sitting there going, well, that ending feels a bit, you know, crap. Yeah. The rest of this movie feels kind of awesome. Let's change it up. It, well, it was funny because as I was watching it, Duncan, I was like, why don't I watch this more? This is really good. <laughs> You've forgotten. And I'd kind of, yeah, I, I mean, I hadn't completely forgotten the ending. Like, I remembered, oh, this ends with sort of the, you know, the cult out in the woods and whatnot. Uh, but I had sort of forgotten about the fire David thing mm -hmm. and how, how quickly and abruptly it ends. Yeah. And, yeah, and so I had the same reaction at the end of the movie where I was like, oh, that's why I don't watch it that much. Cause... Yeah, this is this is why it's on this list. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one thing, though. It does have a very early performance by one young Caleb Landry Jones, who is literally, I feel, done so well in that movie, he's been typecast in every movie since. Or I think maybe that's just him. Maybe. I think it's sort of like Crispin Glover. Like, you get Crispin Glover to be in your movie to be Crispin Glover. Yeah. And I think you get Caleb Landry Jones in your movie to be Caleb Landry Jones, where he's just greasy and creepy. and Because hey, he's so good hey. at it. He's so good at it. Yeah, but he has fantastic. Like every movie. Every get out. I was even thinking about his appearance in Twin Peaks, The yeah. Return, where he plays just that character. Yeah. I, I think that directors just turn a camera on him. And he's like, I'm just going to say what I want. <laughs> oh, fine. You're a weirdo. As long as you say uh, it into the camera. Oh, man. Him and Nicolas Cage need to do a movie together. I would watch the shit out of that. Oh, my God. You're Caleb uh. Ledger Jones. Oh, uh, I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, All right, Duncan. Uh, do you have a good one? Or, or should um, I? You just like yeah, I've spoken enough about films. You all right, know. all right. Uh, yeah, let's uh, l let's wrap her up uh, this segment anyway with a little bit of talk of Werewolves Within. Oh, yeah, I've seen this one. Yeah, so. and I, yep. I I think that movie is very funny. Uh, yes, it is, I totally it's, agree. It's not a horror film by any stretch, yeah. although it has the beat of a horror film. Like it, yep. it is directed by a guy, Josh Rubin, of course, who did Scare Me, which I also enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um that he understands how horror movies work and is just replacing the horror parts of it with you know ridiculous and silly characters and you know uh some of the the, the like the social commentary aspect of it is a little on the nosy uh, yeah I but think, I but think, it's fun yeah I, th I think that's that was the thing for me like the movie itself um once again moves in like that as a quick watch 
Um, and it's a fun movie. It entertained me. It kept me smiling. It made me... Most of the jokes landed for me, which is... Uh, yeah. Not a lot of horror comedies can have that sort of ratio for me. I would say like about 70% landed really well for me. Um, and I, I like the characters. So, I mean... I mean, it's not it's not reinventing the wheel by any stretch of the imagination, but it felt kind of good to see, like, it just kind of felt good that we're still doing movies like that to a, a, a you know, a high standard, because there's a ton of those horror comedies that come out in the last couple of years that have been painful to watch. So this one was yeah. good. And and the uh, I can't think of the actress's name now because I'm not looking at the IMDb page. But the 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 woman who plays the the postal worker, uh, oh, kind of kind of steals the show. She's really really funny in it. Um, Sam Richardson is is yeah. also very very funny in it. And uh, th- my biggest complaint with it was like when the reveal comes. As far as yeah, you know, I mean, it's no mystery to say that the uh, that there is a mystery of who the werewolf is in the movie. It's kind of a who done it. And yeah. I felt like it was real obvious from Jump. And so when they revealed it, I was like, oh, well, of course, that's where, where this movie was going. But yeah. uh, it, it's still a tremendous amount of fun along the way and, and has some nice little twists and turns. And I think the uh, the character of the the scientist lady who uh, <laughs> kind of holds up in, at this inn amongst all these weirdo <laughs> characters to you know discover that there is a werewolf among them and stuff uh i thought i thought she was uh a lot of fun as well Mm -hmm. um so yeah i I thought werewolf would like you know there was a some buzz uh leading up to the release of that thing yeah yeah yeah. and i think it was totally justified like that is you know it's not gonna blow your mind like like you said duncan this ain't a movie that's reinventing the wheel or anything but it is uh it is quite fun and it's quite entertaining it's entertaining. Like a movie like that, that's all it needs to be is entertaining. Yeah, just show me a good time, and it and it totally was. Uh, okay, you ready for some questions, Duncan? You ready to do this? Did we get questions? Yes, we got questions. Oh well, I would like to hear them. Okay, so the uh, the first one I'm going to paraphrase. This one was from Robert, um, but uh, the 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 question, Duncan. Yep. Uh, was that uh? Sorry, man. There are some streamish. When I'm getting someone into to a new band that maybe someone knows from a periphery, if they've been on the go for a while, I do, and it's the laziest thing to do. But I do tend to set them to have you checked out the greatest hits. Um, like Duran Duran, the greatest hits. That's the one with the white cover, and then it's the album's name, and I believe. Like the actual letterings are all like, st- I think they're stills from different music videos all built up. It's very colourful. Um, that to me is the perfect place to start with Duran Duran because it has, there's literally not a bad song on that greatest hits. And there's loads of songs on there. Um, and it covers, you, you will hear the point, although they do mix them up. It's not, it's the best, the best place to start specifically is with their greatest hits because you'll know every song on there as well. There might be one or two that are, Maybe not as familiar, but you should know everything on there. Um, and then just keep listening to us. We will not do every Duran Duran album, I don't think. Uh, but I do think we'll cover the ones that we think are the most important moving forward. For sure. there There's definitely going to be a point where uh, we we are going to like hit that, that stage where it's like, eh, maybe we're not going to do you know every single record that you know we're in that run now where everyone is kind of a seminal uh duran duran yeah. record yeah yeah and and so um yeah so i'm i'm very i'm i'm excited to do more for sure mm-hmm. um and and yeah so but yeah, i they do I, have i was gonna say they do have um their bands do get to a certain point specifically if you're a band like duran duran that that makes its money primarily from touring like a lot of the larger acts do um that when they release a new album they really only have about two or three like singles on that and the rest is whatever they want to do and they're never going to play that stuff live and no one ever really deep dive listens to it it's just to get them back out on tour which is the status Duran Duran's been at for a while. Um, you know, I've listened to some of their later albums maybe once or twice, 
um, but I always returned to primarily the stuff they did in the, the 80s and up to about the mid 90s where they're they're at their most ferocious are would you say they're they're hungry like the wolf i would say they're hungry like the wolf Bo. uh yeah well done um thank you <laughs> yeah okay i i would agree with that i you know i think i think up through like arena yeah is kind of required listening if you if yes. you want to get into duran duran Yep, yep. And then and then after that I would say like like you said, you know, definitely greatest hits it. It's a real mm -hmm. like the Eagles greatest hits is amazing for a reason. Yeah, because uh, everyone knows every fucking song on it inside out. Right. Yeah. Uh and so yeah, I would say that's, you know, certainly a uh 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 like a place to start. Um but you know, I I mean, not to echo everything that you said here. Don't but, echo everything I said. But I do agree that, like, even even the later records, uh, you're gonna find those things that you really like. Because Duran Duran is one of those bands that just gave a shit and continue yeah. to give a shit. You know, like they're they're still doing their thing. Yes, and, uh, and, and you don't and, get longevity in the the pop world to that extent if you're not good at what you do and you don't care about what you're doing as well. So yeah, and I think the new single that they released recently was like, oh, this sounds like Duran Duran. This is cool. Yeah, you know, I believe that's what the kids over here call a banger. Yeah, yeah, it Stone was Stone Cold it was Banger. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So uh, let's get to question number two, and and this is probably, uh -oh. you know, the real shit. So uh -oh. uh, the Ram Man asks us, "What would you rather see? A horror anthology from Guillermo del Toro, John Carpenter, and Robert Eggers, or a horror anthology featuring Ari Aster, Dario Argento?" And Jordan Peele. Uh, the second. Really? All right. How come? Yeah. Right. So let's let's swing it back in. So the first group were John Carpenter. Yeah. Um, we had Guillermo del Toro, and we had Robert Eggers. That's said. right. Right. Now, let me just stress here. Guillermo del Toro's films tend to be surprisingly long in length. I think that's the format that he works at best. Like, I, I can't imagine him doing like a like a forty minute movie. I like the worlds he builds, and I want to spend time in the worlds that he builds. So I don't think he's necessarily all that great at short form cinema. So he, I mean, I would still watch it, but mm, well, you know what I mean. Uh, Robert Eggers, same idea. Robert Eggers, like those movies tend to be long, um, like lots of silence and lots of tension. So yeah, I'm gonna say no to that as well. And John Carpenter, I've said this before. I don't really want to see John Carpenter make anything else now apart from music. And yeah. Sweet love to his wife. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with you. Um Yeah, flip it to the other side then, because like, if you've ever watched any of the short movies from Ari Aster, they're fucking nuts. So he's come from that background. They're terrifying as well, right? Dario Argento has worked on anthologies before. Um, he did the Two Evil Eyes, uh, which I mean, it wasn't amazing by any stretch of the imagination. But I still think, I think, given a short amount of time, I think he could probably do something pretty bonkers. And the last name was Jordan Peele. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who literally worked for years in short form sketches. So yeah, I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh... At first, I was skeptical, Duncan. I'm not going to lie. Uh, well, at first, you were afraid you were petrified. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I started thinking about how I couldn't live without you by my side. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't know though. I'm kind of excited at this premise of. I would like. To, I would like to see that first group. I think. I think that's where I come down. Like you're I mean, right. If I it's get not... to see both. I, I mean, if that's an option, then yeah. that's great. But if I could only have, if I was financing the movie, I would finance the second one. Yeah. Uh, if I see, I would put my money on the. I would just like to see 
Del Toro, Carpenter, and Eggers all collected together. Yeah. Uh, just for the press uh, tour. Yeah. Where, with like old man John Carpenter not giving a shit. Robert Eggers being a weirdo hipster and Del Toro hugging everybody. and He literally hugs anyone. Yeah. Uh, so you don't get too close to him because he's a hugger, uh, which we're going to. He yeah, uh, from Guillermo, this episode the slasher. So. Guillermo del Toro is like ninety percent COVID at this point. Uh, Guillermo del Toro is the Judith of this episode. She's a hugger, bro. She's a hugger. Yep. Um. All right. Speaking of, those are our questions. Thank you very much for. Uh, Thank for you. And uh, all right, so let's get to mode of uh slasher. Third last one. Third last one. Yes, it, we we are we're getting down to it. Um, I really feel like we're on the edge of a reveal from this show. <laughs> and you know what's really sad is that ultimately we predicted not only what the reveal is going to be, but the episode they're going to do it on. I, yeah, it feels like we called this from the cheap seats, and I really yeah, like, I like. I both really like that, and it's really frustrating and disappointing that this show yeah. is so obvious that it was like, oh, yeah, here's exactly what's going to happen, and here's when it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, which is a, a bit of a bummer. Anyway, so this episode is called Drone, is the name of it. Yeah. And we uh, we open the show with a pretty unusual moment where it's uh, Mark Stroganoff just fucking some lady in a dish room of a Real restaurant. Really? Yeah, we like we get some nudity, which I I think may be the first time. Tets, yeah, tets are out. Uh, so. in 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 slasher, and they're they're having sex, and she's like, "What are you afraid of getting caught?" And Mark Stroganoff is like, "I ain't afraid of anything." And then like does a move where he throws his tie over his shoulder. And, guy. <laughs> and then just starts going after it while taking pictures with his yeah. phone. Well, the thing is, like, that, you know, that I'm not afraid of anything because we need to make sure that the audience knows that he never used to be afraid of anything, but now he's terrified of everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the uh, that uh, Simon Pegg movie, uh, A Ridiculous Fear of Everything. Is that oh, yeah. Called? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good one as well. So, um, but after they finish up, he's like fixing his tie and whatnot. And he passes somebody in the restaurant and they're like, is everything okay? He's like, yeah, I'm just a health inspector and the seafood is fresh, Duncan. Uh, uh, come, uh, come on, what? Mark Stroganoff. We're all come better on. than that. Jesus. Come on, slasher. But <laughs> so, but they, so they have a seat to have dinner after, you know, it's like, you know, every man after sex is like, I could go for a sandwich right now. Yeah, and uh, so, every woman wants a three-course a la carte menu. <laughs> right, doesn't want to clean up or anything. I don't uh, blame her. Yeah, I mean, savor the moment, I suppose. And so, <laughs> yeah, they're talking about the partners. Is the thing like she's like, oh, have you heard anything from the partners? He's like, I haven't heard anything from the partners, but don't worry, because I take care of my people, and you're my people. Yeah. Then Duncan. Yes. <laughs> uh, in walks the sheriff from season one, who is who is now dressed up like Tom Waits. <laughs> what the cooking in there? Yeah, right. And he rolls in, and, and it's just like, "Hey, Mark, you remember me?" And <laughs> and Mark shrugged off. Is like, "No, I don't remember you." And so he takes off his hoodie. He's like, it's Well, me. that's my favorite thing. It is like, do you remember me? And he looks up and goes, nope. And then he lowers the hood, exposing his haircut. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I totally remember uh, you. Now I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it, the guy's name is Hate, is his name. Yeah. Uh, AKA the sheriff from last season. He is, yeah. And, uh, and, and so what happened is, apparently Mark Stroganoff, had, he's a big shot lawyer, and he was defending a dude who was a drunk driver and killed this guy's son. Yep. And and Mark Stroganoff got him off, and he he gives uh you know this Tom Waits character a real dressing down where he's and like, I'm gonna say I'm kind of I'm kind of a mark on this one. Yeah, absolutely, and and like he's not wrong because what he says is like, hey, if you want to blame somebody. 
you know, blame the the cop who didn't make the arrest properly, or blame yeah. you know the 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 jury. person that made made my client sit for twenty hours before doing a breathalyzer on him. Like these are clearly all the issues that led to me getting this guy off. Yeah. So yeah, blame these people. Don't blame me for being really good at my job. And I'm like that. You know what? I'm with Mark on this one. He's a scumbag lawyer. This may be the only time I've ever sided with a lawyer in anything. And so Mark just kind of straightens his tie. Yep. Goes back to dinner. And then it just becomes the Fisher King. Well, (laughs) where where this guy, you know, pulls a gun. He's got his gun. (laughs) No, no, don't you ever apologize for that. (laughs) And then he he ends up. blowing the head off the this poor woman and yep. you know as all right over mark's face right and as sonny corleone would put it but a being you got his brains all over your nice suit <laughs> yeah he falls over the guy walks over and basically says, this is this is my like oh did like i started laughing and i should not have laughed as hard as i did with this one he says i made a promise to my son before he died that you know I would I would get vengeance for him and you know and then so he shoots Mark twice in the arm. Yeah, right? I'd kill the person that did the wrong to him, and then I, I I said to him that I would see him on the other side and then kills himself. Yeah, see see if you'd made a promise which results in you killing yourself, and the the job is to make sure that you've killed the other person. You see the light in their eyes go out first before you shoot yourself. You don't shoot them twice in the arm. To which, by the way, he made the noise of Sarah from the first season. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good. Oh, I've been shot. Yeah, um, um, uh, yeah. Like you, you wait for that, or you shoot them in the head. Or double you, tap. Du- you yeah. Double tap. You yeah. do something to confirm it before you, you know, right. make things final for yourself because. Guess what? Mark survived. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, as Lori points out in chat, it's a show filmed in Canada. So Mr. Tory Spelling has to be cast in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, boy, the show is just all Canadians all get out. Uh, but <laughs> um, then we go to credits from that. Like it yes, just goes. That's an intro. Yeah. And then we go back to the fire uh, from the last episode where Noah. Uh, got set ablaze and then just pushed oh, on top of Tal. This episode has so many issues, Bo. So, Kira... This is, the and- first, this is the first issue that I have with this episode. So, oh, well, we'll, lay it out for us, Bo. Yeah, so Kira and Peter are there trying to figure out what's happened. And while they're, you know, just kind of jacking around this camp, uh, Noah wakes up like all <laughs> seven style where he's just like, burr, burr. Yeah. he's like, I'm not, I'm not dead. I'm just, I'm just very badly burned. Yeah. It, <laughs> yes. It is a hundred percent. The Austin power move. And Kira is like, go get some blankets for this guy. And Peter's like, uh, I guess. I mean, yeah. like, can't we, we not just, just like, can we not just maybe like, like just put her hand over his mouth like Tony Soprano style and just let this guy go. Listen, Kira, I know what the prime directive says. <laughs> Don't interfere. <laughs> I think we just let nature take care of this one, you know. Let's go and back to the cabin. Out here. <laughs> we'll go back to the cabin, have some hot chocolate, we'll come back in a couple of hours, see what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, so Noah without spoiling too much about this episode. Noah's arc in this episode is nothing. It yes, it is to be a prop that everyone else talks about while he softly moans. Yeah, so we prolong his life once again. Did not kill Talvinder, right? Did not no, kill Talvinder. Did not. Attempted rape. That's a bad thing, and we can't get away from that. Absolutely. Yes, assaulted a woman. However, in this show, he has had. Frostbite of <laughs> frostbite of the foot, and uh, severely frostbitten foot. He was raped twice by a man, right? And you know, made a sexual play thing. Was almost strangled to death by said man, um, and then was burned alive, and then prolonged an entire day 
before he finally leaves our mortal coil. Yeah. I'm just like the show has weird justice, Bo. It's as if the morality is not necessarily consistent or well thought out. No, exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, the, the punishment doth not fit the crime. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, what? yes, it's crazy. Anyways. Well, there's, there's a bit later on in this episode where Mark refers, when he's talking to Rennie, refers to Glenn as an innocent man. It's yes. Like the man that raped Noah twice and murdered the person that he came up to this sanctuary with. And we're referring to him as an innocent man. Yeah, yeah, Yikes. it's yeah, it, it's Yikes. not great, Duncan. Um, Yikes. So, all right, we'll get to that in a second. But so <laughs> inside the the cabin, they've got just a turkey baster that they're using just to keep him moist, <laughs> which really uh, tickled me. Yeah, and well, so, it's, it's Judith that's doing it as yeah. well, and she's just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Right, and they're just trying to like peel all the bits of Talvinder and clothing yeah. off of his completely charred body, fused to his flesh. Yeah, and Renee is like, ah, well, boy, ain't this something? Because you know, we killed the guy that was yeah. killing everybody, D didn't we, guys? Yeah. Didn't we? Right, everybody. Didn't I kill the guy that was killing everybody? And I didn't make a horrible rash mistake that you all told me not to do. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Don is like, no, clearly <laughs> yeah. you didn't. I mean, you murdered someone, yes. Yeah. And Ren, real boy Ren, is also in the mix, saying like, hey, "This guy's better off dead." Am I right, everybody? Yeah. And, and weirdly, no one really responds to that. Uh, but so Mark. <laughs> is also not handling this well. He's just like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. And so he runs out onto the porch <laughs> where uh, Dawn follows him. Or no, no, this is where they go up to his room. Uh, not the porch, but we'll get there. He's Dawn and Mark flirt and make out all over this house in this episode. Well, we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. I just didn't expect it to happen as vigorously on this episode as the they push it like they've really just fallen in love yeah yeah and and so uh they uh, up in his room like dawn hugs him and is like oh everything's gonna be okay and you're like oh you're so dead in this episode mark stroke it off you are not well, yeah because we got his backstory you're not yeah. allowed to see backstory you see backstory of that character dies that's the real and so we cut back to the table where noah is just wheezing yeah and peter is like Look, I'm no medical expert. That's why I that's why I have Beverly. But I have to ask you, Kira, is so he supposed to be making, that, making that sound? <laughs> I think that's literally what it is. Is he supposed to be making that sound? Yeah. Like, is I mean, he like... snoring or something? I mean, is he sawing logs? Yeah. I, I, do, I don't know about you guys, but I personally cannot concentrate on my Sudoku puzzle with this noise in the background. Maybe just roll him onto his side or something. Maybe that'll stop that. <laughs> it's so fucking... Can you put some cotton in his mouth? Yeah. <laughs> and up his nose. <laughs> down his throat. Let's just, let's just end. It has to end for Noah. Look, Hashtag for the... justice for Noah, right? <laughs> no character should be put through what this guy's been put through. For the record, I was the one who said we should just come back for hot chocolate. Yeah. We could have avoided <laughs> all of this. <laughs> and... Kira's like, no, 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 his throat's compromised on account of being cooked. Yeah. And and he's he needs to get to a hospital. Well, yeah, she's like that. Listen, like this system shutting down, his his airways are blocked, his he's in severe shock just now, his skin is getting sepsis. We you know, like he, he needs to be in hospital, you know, he won't survive here. Ergo, he won't survive. Bo. Yeah. And so Dawn comes down the steps. Yep. Uh, because she hears a plane and they're running outside to flag this plane down. And the plane lands, takes Noah away at the hospital bowl, the end of the show. Oh, if only Duncan, we're not, <laughs> we're not so lucky as all that. Um, no, instead, uh, uh, Peter is part of this mix too, who has come out to like, see this plane and try to wave at it and whatnot. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's got to come back, everyone. 
And they're like, why? Why? Yeah, yeah that was the question I thought. And he's like, well, listen, it, like there hasn't been an abundance of planes over here. It didn't go out the way first. So there must be like a, a you know, an airport landing strip or something in the vicinity, which means he needs to fly back this way, which is not how aircraft work. Right. Uh, planes, planes don't tend to fly out and back identically on the same route. Yeah, it turns out, Duncan, you can just go to an airport and then to a totally different airport after that. You don't no, have to go back and forth between the same two. Crazy. My, like, my favorite experience was going on holiday to New York, and I remember the plane flying out and going around the Statue of Liberty and then back to Scotland because I had to land where it took off from. Yeah. Um, it was my favorite. It was my favorite. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's that really stupid hypothesis but then at this stage who hasn't made one in this show um yeah i mean <laughs> it's like... it's some pretty thin reasoning but so they get the idea that what they're gonna do is they're gonna spell out sos in the snow with a bunch of sticks to, yep. so that when the plane inevitably comes back as planes do yeah uh then they can get you know this plane's attention and mark stroganoff is like well how about we just uh make some bonfires to generate a bunch of smoke, but we're going to have to go deep into the woods to get the green wood yeah. to generate this smoke. And I'm like, there are trees growing all around everywhere, you. All, all around you. And yeah. they're green. You yeah. Use them. They're yep. evergreens. It's right yep. in the name. Yep. Yep. But no, no, no. Uh, Peter and Don are going to go off to collect sticks. And as they're walking through the snow, Don literally puts her foot in it. Bo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> we'll all right. We'll get to that because we have to do the one cutaway scene where uh, Judith yes. and Ren are yep. are looking over Noah during have this a little moment. Power. Yeah, and uh, Ren is like, you know, if it hadn't been for all these assholes showing up, like, our you would never have had your peace and and of mind disturbed and all that kind yep. of thing. Literally, and, I would not be here if these people were not here, is basically what he's saying. Yes, right. And uh and and he's like, Look, there's no one going back to normal after this. Like they, they yeah. have they have come and they've screwed everything up. And maybe, just maybe, Judith, that if you know they came here to hide this body of this girl that they murdered then maybe the slow painful death that we are witnessing from noah on this table yep. is kind of what he deserves and ren is kind of an invisible jerk at this point i'm like well yes because you're just like well i mean no one deserves this and he's like i've said my piece I've yeah said my piece yeah and, right? and, and judith yeah judith is kind of defending the kids and whatnot but uh, but yes, so then we move away from this nonsense out to where Dawn and Peter are collecting some wood. Yep. And deep in the heart of the forest, Bo. <laughs> uh, For but no reason. <laughs> For no reason at all. Deep in the heart of the woods. <laughs> and, and so they hear somebody... And Don just whips out this gun and starts shooting the place up like Yosemite Sam. He's got a gun! <laughs> Completely. And then just steps into a bear trap. Yeah. And there's a moment where they're like trying to get it open and whatnot. And she's like, I can't get it open. And Peter's like, look, I've done everything I can. I think we're going to have to take that leg off. It does feel like he's about two steps away from chopping the leg off. And then Don, once again, one of the best characters in this. I really do like Don. Um, it's just like, just go and get help. Fuck. Right. So, you you stupid, stupid man. Yes. Go get me help. And then I'm going to try to wedge it open with a big stick, even though Which that's not going to work. Nah, it didn't work. Um, this big stick would be good for the fire that we're building, but not for opening this bear trap on my ankle um and, then, and as she's well as well, i was about to say as she's doing this she hears a noise again whips around shoots a gun again because don has itchy trigger finger bow no shit she hears a noise and she shits um and it's it's mark stroganoff who is here to help her she's all apologetic then all of a sudden peter shows up they manage to get her foot out yay don's alive yeah <coughs> bless you thank you 
So yeah, she's alive, and she's like maybe the foot's gonna. I don't know. We'll find if we can salvage it because we'll just check with Kira, who's not having to look after everyone in this house and all their problems. Yeah, <laughs> it. Oh, it's this is such an. Oh, poor Kira, poor Kira in this episode. By the way, um, I love the fact that Dawn is just. She wants to shoot somebody. Oh. Who. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to take a gun with you on a retreat, you got to shoot someone. Yeah, it's a truly Chekhov's gun. Yes. Um, but yeah, so so we get her out of the trap and back to the cabin, and Kira's checking her over. Uh, you know, she does this great moment where she just kind of grabs the ankle. Yeah. And uh, to see if it's broken, she's checking to see if it's broken. Right, but it's clearly very painful because Don and I quote a sadistic cunt which I love yeah of course you do yeah I, I love that I, I love that not only because it's it's the national word of Scotland mm -hmm. um, but like in general you know what I hate and I hate this in TV shows where like you know it's going to sting and it, what you get is someone going like right. that and just not how people are like yeah, at right. all people are not just like, like that people get like they will swear they will scream they'll do something to vent the the you know the pain get it out and Donna is like downright abusive in this whole segment. You would have thought that Pazuzu had taken over her soul. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that would be a lot of. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mark Stroganoff sucks cocks in hell. What's <laughs> what she's like? Because she just throws this title like three back to back like. Ultra mean, horrible put downs. Yeah. Um, and Kira, which we'll find out, is no stranger at this from her former profession, fixes things up and um, lets her know that, you know, it's not broken. Yeah, there's some damage to the yeah. skin around, but in a week's time, she'll be fine. So she's to rest up. Offers her some of uh, Benny Ironside's medication, um, which she says she won't take because, once again, Don, MVP of this entire series we've been saying it since the start although she won't be a final girl no nope. she's very smart she's like that listen i'm already in pain i'm already confined to a bed if i take these it's going to dull my senses and there's a killer on the list i'll just ride out the pain and i was like yeah you well done yeah good for her i, I like it and has the good sense like as as kira's leaving he thanks her for it yes you know she does. yeah yeah and and is like hey sorry about that you know, sadistic kind of thing i well that's how you know it's not mean right and that's what I've, any other any other show by the way if anyone's a filmmaker or you know a tv show producer or whatnot it's okay for a character to be mean to another character when receiving sore medical treatment as long as they apologize because you know it wasn't done through malice that's right that's um, right um um so Mark Stroganoff is about to leave, and Don's like, "Wait, don't go, Mark Stroganoff." Yep. And he's like, "Uh, yeah, I guess I can stay for a minute." And she gives him a real poor little rich girl speech about like, <laughs> you know, "Look, yeah. just because I'm rich and beautiful, everyone thinks I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. But you know what I need? I need some Mark Stroganoff." Yep. And sh they end up kissing. And uh, she asks him, like, hey, do you mind just sleeping in the bed and please don't take it out of your pants because that's not where we are yet? Yeah. And boundaries, Paul. Boundaries. Right. So they just spoon, and Mark Stroganoff is like, don't worry, Dawn. I'm going to take care of you. Mm. Yeah. And so uh, we, we go back to Noah where Peter is kind of watching over this crispy critter. Yeah. <laughs> And Kira comes down. And you know it's been a few days since they've ate, so Noah's smelling delicious right now. Right. He, yeah, he's probably like, you know, I, this is probably out of line, but I could really go for some barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would really like some Kansas City rub. He's, it, he's, uh, he's got that sweet Talvinder glaze on him. Can you smell it? Mm. I know that it was gross when Glenn did it, but I'm really thinking of eating Noah. I mean, he's halfway there. Uh, so uh, Kira comes down and he's like, you should get some sleep because I'm about to cough into his thigh. And she, Kira is like, before I go, I have to know, did you guys actually kill that girl? Yeah. And Noah kind of comes to here 
Uh, for like, what purpose? For what reason? Because this is all destroyed three seconds after he says the words. Yeah, well, he's like, oh, tell the police it was me. And then she asks Peter, well, is that true? Is that, you know, was it Noah? And Peter just doesn't say a word, just stares goes, at ah, her. Yeah. Ah, no. That, that. Yeah, he's, like, he's like that. I'm sorry I'm losing you. I'm, I'm going into a tunnel. <laughs> You're right here. No, I'm sorry. It's a tunnel in my brain. Yes, yes. Uh, communications are dodgy on the Enterprise. <laughs> Computer. Tunnel, please. <laughs> Tunnel. <laughs> it's like fucking static up here. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have a go. Go have some Earl Grey. Yes, uh, Earl Grey hot. Uh, but yeah, like, he, like so Noah's, what can we say, valiant efforts to, to allow them to pin it on him, thus closing the case, uh, is like completely destroyed three seconds later once again what's the point of this part of the story there is no point in this just a waste of yeah. my time it, it, it's head scratching man it really yeah. is yeah uh all right so we get another fisher king flashback of mark getting hit by brains but now yeah. he sees dawn's face as the yeah. one with the hole in her head. I like this. I like this effect, actually. I really like this effect. It, yeah, it's quite good. It's one of the better yeah. things about the episode. And and then Mark wakes up, you know, from, from this terrible dream and goes downstairs where everyone's hanging out. This and, is the best. This is the bit when I was like that. Are they about to do uh, you know, like the like like a, a good old fashioned clue? Right. Are they are they about are they about to bust out the clue? Are we gonna get a piece in uh, a merit? can't see his name perry mason-esque sequence where we're going to try and work out who could is colombo about to come in with one more question but i was like i was like i was like oh this is what we need because he is and he says it to everyone he's like listen everyone for those in the know they will know that before i came here i was an attorney and i was fucking good at what i did and i was like the ego on this guy i love it it's like i was fucking good at what i did one of us is the killer we all know that we just don't know who the killer is i'll tell you what we're gonna do i'm gonna find out i'm gonna run a good old-fashioned investigation i'm going to interrogate every single one of you one at a time and we're gonna find out what you did beforehand we're gonna ask you questions you will answer my questions and we're going to get to the bottom of this. I will find the killer. And everyone, surprisingly, is like, oh, oh, hello. Starting with Remy, who tries to get a little bit uppy on him, which I kind of love because yeah. strong enough, swats about and says, oh, I'm sorry, Remy. Uh, like, weren't you the one that you know completely butchered an innocent man? And I'm like, well, is he innocent, Mark? <laughs> I know you could have probably got him off on the crime because you're this hotshot lawyer, but... Was he innocent? Rape, attempted murder. So, yeah, he did murder someone? I mean, he wasn't innocent. Uh, he's uh, innocent of perhaps being this serial killer. That's literally the the level of guilt and innocence is purely on this one in Mark's mind. Everything yeah. else is fine, but yeah, like Judas not keen on this at all. Um, what Ren I love complains, is, of course. Ren, Ren complains a lot, but no one seems to be listening to Ren. I wonder why. The only thing better is the Ren interrogation scene, which is maybe the best moment in slasher history. Yeah, we'll like, get to oh, that. We're going to get in slice. Maybe my fit. This is like, I'm like, they are selling this so fucking hard. Like at this point, someone thought this was a good idea, and, it, and the, if anything, it makes me more convinced. You see, if I was on the like on the fence, which you shouldn't have been by this point, I would be totally off that fence and on the side of Ren isn't real. <laughs> I can't believe. That they somebody in in the creative team of Slasher still thinks that the audience hasn't figured this out. Do you think that maybe the maybe Adam Martin was the only one that knew that he wasn't, so he made everyone else write him like he was real? There's no way. Because and they you, just took like, but just took the dialogue out of anyone speaking back to him apart from Judith. No, because, because there's he, the I mean that <laughs> There's also the direction of it where it's like nobody looked directly at this guy ever. Oh, God. It's so, right, well, yeah, so anyway, he works around them, um, but no one wants to do this. Absolutely no one wants to do this. And yeah. well, then he comes up with a compromise, right? Yeah. 
his compromise is a great compromise, actually. It's like, listen, Don's upstairs. Don will sit in on these ones with me, right? I'll, inter- I'll inter- interrogate everyone, and Don will be there, right? And then when it comes to interrogating me, Don will interrogate me. She'll be the one to interrogate you guys, right, that are all the people from the camp originally, and I'll interrogate my people, but we'll both sit in on each of those and we can jump in on questions. Does everyone feel okay with that? And Peter's like, yeah, I can actually live with that. And Judas kind of quasi like, mm-hmm. um, and then he's like that straight away. Though, he's like that, right, you, Kira, you're with me. Yeah. And, and she's like, but he's dying. And he's like that, fucking cut the shit, Kira. Let's do this. Yeah, go, go, come with us to our hastily put together interrogation room. Yeah. Now, all I'm going to say is we get almost all the backstories for all the characters here, and I feel like the show could have just done this on episode one and saved us the bad backstories, but I know why it's <laughs> parsed it out. But anyway, um, or that should have been the format. We should have started at this point, and then the episodes before could have been the flashback. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. no, that would have been a better construction instead of trying to... Per- anyway, yes. Uh- uh, yeah, it would have taken us a lot longer to work out that Ren wasn't real. Um but uh, so we sit down with Kira and he directs his questions. Like, like he knows Kira used to be a nurse, but what he doesn't know, Bo, is why Kira gave up being a nurse and came to the commune. That sounds like there may be a story there. Yeah. Well, when he asks her, hey, where were you when that first girl, Andy, died? She's yeah. like, I was upstairs reading in my room alone. He's like, well, what were you reading? <laughs> well, a book about murdering teenagers. <laughs> so, well, what I love about this is she's like, actually, maybe we should be asking you where you were because you were the last one to talk to her. Yeah, and yeah. I was like that, and, and he's like, silence. I am the question asker. <laughs> maybe I am a murderer, but that doesn't mean I'm not a good lawyer. That's right. Uh, Watch so, me get myself out of this one. It was self defense. That was, uh, I, yeah, I was insane at the time. Yes. Uh, so. As he's questioning her, she reveals, like, yes, I used to be an ER nurse, but I've been working this really long shift. I've been on the floor 13 for 13 hours. hours on her feet. Yeah, 13 yeah. hours on her feet. <laughs> and th- somebody came into the ER, and she was supposed to uh, draw back on the potassium uh, that was being infused into this patient. And instead yep. of pulling back on it, she she uh, pushed it forward and gave Double more down. potassium. End up killing this woman. Yep. Uh, on the table because of this mistake. And and actually says, Duncan, like, oh, yeah, there was this board investigation. I was not fired. Yep. Everybody, like, was like, hey, sometimes shit happens. And, yep. you know, it's unfortunate, but we're not holding you liable for it. But she's like, I couldn't do it anymore. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't make those decisions anymore. Yeah. It, it ruined their confidence. It ruined it just it ruined that profession for her, which is kind of funny because we're forcing her to save lives all the way through this now, yeah. which means she's she just getting the worst PTSD ever. <laughs> right. um, every, every time someone like hurts himself, she's just like, oh, I killed a woman! <laughs> yeah. Potassium, you know. <laughs> uh, but like, she, can't, she can't look at a banana the same way again. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a oh, potassium banana based joke. Thank it's you. a good one. Yeah, you're not gonna get this level of potassium based humor anywhere else. It's a as a niche market. Yeah, but yeah. so she says, uh, you know, I couldn't do this any anymore. Mark says, well, you you certainly have the ability to perform the crimes that have yeah. occurred here. What you don't have is any motive. Yeah. So we're going to let you go, and, and we think you're on the up and up. Yeah, which also made me kind of laugh a little bit here. At what point have any of these murders shown any evidence of someone truly being like a surgeon mm-hmm. out with the bloodletting in the first one? Like I imagine I could probably remove an eye if I had to. It would be messy, but it looked messy in this episode. Like chopping bodies up into small bits. Once again, I don't think you need to have a medical degree to do that. I have long said, Duncan, that I have no reason to believe that I'm not a very good surgeon. Yeah, of course. So, yes, I'm willing to try anything and have offered to on a number of occasions. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is I've seen how delicately and proficiently I have carved up a medium rare steak bow. And I I mean, I think I could handle myself in an operating theater. I 100% agree with you. I think you and I should open a practice. I think we'd be fine. 
Dunboco Surgeries, Inc. Yes, yes. And we will not be undersold. We'll do it for 10% cheaper than any hospital. How about that? I mean, that? that's that's how you get business, is by overcommitting and, you know, doing it for cheap. We'll do, yeah, it's a real fire sale yeah. on, <laughs> on surgeries. <laughs> hey, hey, you want your spleen removed? Yeah. We can do that. You know what I know about this, the spleen, Duncan? It's mushy. Yeah, it rhymes with bean. <laughs> hey, we're practically professionals already. We are professionals. Right. Uh, yeah, listen, so let's let's get done. Let her go. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're like that. Kira, you are free to go. And we're all like, we already knew that because she's going to be our final girl. But okay, Slasher, I'll play this game. So then Ren is in the chair. Oh, Ren is in the chair on the offensive, answering questions he's not been asked because the show wants you to believe the question was asked off screen yeah <laughs> and he said i'm not gonna sit here and answer any of your questions you know why because i see through you mark stroganoff i see right through you like you were invisible like you weren't even there yeah like you're not a real person like me and <laughs> man judith is on the other side of the door for no reason at all she's just creeping about there you're right and they're like judith get in here we need to talk to you and there's uh, this shot of Ren looking real, like, pissed off about being dismissed so out of hand. Yeah, but no one has said anything to him. In fact, no one has said that this is the end of the conversation. No one's asked him anything. No one makes eye contact with him. It looks like Mark Stroganoff is, but he's actually staying in that empty chair. Yeah, yeah. It It is one of the harder pushes this show has made. Oh, they put it all on the line here. It's, it's now or never, Bo. It's, it's now or never. Our Ren won't wait. Yeah. It's <laughs> wonderful. It it made me laugh so hard when I was watching this. It's hilarious, but also it's totally needless because we don't see everyone get interrogated. Right. But so yeah, again, it's like in it, it's, it's a showing off cards that we don't need in an episode like this at all. Well, because there's no subtlety or any of that to the <laughs> doings of Slasher. They, yeah. you know, this is a real more is more kind of uh, attitude from the show. Yeah, plus we're, we're leaning into Ren appears to be a bit more sadistic in these talks with Judith. I wonder if there's something suspicious with him, question mark. Oh my God. All right, so we're going to get to this. The, all right, so once Judith takes the chair from Ren yeah. and is talking about like how upset she was, or Mark is asking her about how upset she was about all these outsiders coming there. Mm -hmm. and uh he says you know i know a lot about everyone except you judith like you're the den mother around here yeah but who were you before you came here and well, why he you... knows he knows one thing about her he knows yeah. that she lost the love of her life he uh -huh. left her right and then she came to work at the thing he also knows that she has a prescription for clonazepam yes which and... i was like oh yeah and she's like oh i have trouble sleeping he's like well that must be some insomnia problem if they have pres prescribed clonazepam to you and he says he also knows that she cuts herself yeah and and that she had a nervous breakdown after you know the implication is heavily that this love of her life committed suicide yes well yeah well i think i think the implication if you read between the lines that she's committed suicide, the implication if you are not paying attention to the show uh, and and or are just dumb is that he left her. And she's a bit of a self-armor. Right. You know what I mean? Which to me, once again, like all the more reason for me, if I was a dumber person to think, that feels a bit clumsy. Let me spend a bit more time reevaluating Judith's character in this show. Wait one second. Is Ren a real boy? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It's, yes, it's it's very stupid. And Judith, like, stands up for herself and is like, I'm not going to take this. Uh, I'm not going to take this gaslighting bullshit is, is how yeah. she puts it to Mark Stroganoff. And even Dawn seems to, like, we get a cutaway to her where it looks like she's very sympathetic to yeah. Judith's plight here. Well, because Mark... Mark doesn't help himself because he slips into a very arrogant accusation, accusatory tone in the way he asks the questions. So he becomes the, the typical lawyer. 
You know what I mean? And like he's he's like even at the point where she's like, you know, right, well, Mark settled in a little bit, he pushes those things quite heavily on her. Um and it, like exposes himself as maybe not the nice guy that we've seen thus far in the show. Yeah, yeah. It's uh very clearly he is you know, we'll we'll get a, a finer point put on this in a minute. With Rennie, yeah, yeah Rennie's but, one's pretty funny. But yeah, he's definitely kind of an asshole here. Like this is the dude that was uh railing the the lady in the dish room, you know? Yeah. And so Renee comes in and is being questioned and he's like, So, Renee, you know a lot about power tools and Subarus, don't you? <laughs> and she's like, Wait, what? That's <laughs> I think that might be just an unfair stereotype. <laughs> and <laughs> well, like she, she, like it's not far off it, but she does counter by saying, "Well, so do you guys? You've been up here as long as I have." And it's like, yeah, but and then she counters back with the very accurate point of, "Listen, I loved um, Antoine. Why would I kill him?" Yeah, and Mark's got all sussed out the fucking money. Right. Uh, yeah. He's, ah, one more thing. Uh, yeah. you, you, he's like, you two had a very <laughs> unconventional marriage and you shared yeah. all the assets. And what would this resort he said that he's, be? Uh, so? Unconventional. It's not unconventional marriage. He says unconsummated marriage, yeah, which yeah. sets her off like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And, and she's like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a typical marriage by any stretch, but I loved him and I would have died for him. And he's like, ha ha. Yeah. But <laughs> one thing we do know is that you have killed for him, Renee. Yes, haven't you? Hmm. And she's like, I'm not going to take any of this. And she stalks off. Yeah. And then we get uh, a, a quick uh, intermission with Judith in her bedroom. With another handwritten letter. In the hand of an old lady, uh, Ren has written to <laughs> Here's a scene we haven't seen yet, but yeah. will. Yes. Is Kira finding all of these lessons? I, and she's doing her due diligence, which I like. That character, that character is learning. Uh, I guess. But <laughs> anyway, uh, a little bit late after murder, <laughs> right? And, and also, you're you're dragging him here anyway, and presumably to go check these records and to immediately come out and be like, yeah, yeah here's who it is. Instead of just yeah. saying like, Hey, here's what I'm thinking. So if I walk into this place and this crazy woman is there and murders yeah. me, I want you to know what's going on. Well, it's the, like she says, someone said something yeah. about the camp that they shouldn't have known. Right. What you do is you tell Mark what that is. Yes, a hundred percent. Did but, Robin ever tell you about the girl that he found with Palvinder's body being found in a cave? Was that public knowledge in the camp? You just ask that, and then when Mark goes, "No, it wasn't." Hmm. Then how did Judith know about it? Yes. Hmm. Hey, you know what I mean? Something right. like that. Anything like that. <laughs> right. You Tucker Carlson. It. You're just. I'm just yeah. asking questions. Here. I'm just asking questions. Yeah. And so. She's like, look, I need you to just stand out here with the gun and and not wander off into the woods yes. <laughs> while I'm checking in, in the cabin. And so she goes Don't have stuff. a flat don't have a flashback vision. Just concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah, if you would just stop <laughs> reminiscing about this horrible part of your life for two goddamn seconds so yeah. that I can I can try to uh you know discern to divine yeah. the the name of the murderer here i mean i understand that things are grim right now and we're all under pressure but what i'm saying to you is don't remember the first day that you came to camp if you could just not flashback for a little bit. yeah <laughs> for just just the next five minutes then we are golden can yeah. you do that for me mark yeah so she uh she goes inside and Mark Stroganoff is circling the cabin around the perimeter and hears yeah. something in the woods and goes to investigate, but it seems it's like nothing. Nothing. There. nothing there. So this would be the perfect time for a flashback. Yeah, so he flashes back to, and it's kind of a nothing scene where he just goes to, shows up at the cabin and they all hug him. And Once Judith again, is why there. do we need these scenes? Why, I don't, like, see when... See when you met that character, and see once you've seen his backstory. At any point, you like, I wonder how he got to the cabin. Uh, yeah, I wonder if they hugged when they met. Yeah, like I know yeah. that he had a horrific past. He's literally just explained to Don why he came to the cabin. Mm -hmm. I don't physically need to see him arrive. 
Right. But so I guess the idea is that he's getting in touch with this inner peace or something. Yes. And so he goes to check, uh, or I'm sorry, Renee is checking records from 2012. Oh, uh, this is the, this is the, this is that. And here is another thing that we absolutely did not need, which is her to grab a file, yeah. open it up. We see the picture of like Andy first. Yeah. And they do these flashbacks where it's the, the characters showing up to get their picture taken now why are we doing i i mean the only like, reason is to do the reveal of who it is just yeah, so we can later do a reveal that he doesn't exist yeah <laughs> which is real stupid when you think about it oh it's so stupid because they go through each he goes through each of the the records of the camp counselors and like bo says when we see the picture at the top we get a flashback to the day that that photo was taken and then we keep going through and we're going through all it past Hal Vinder, you know, all the way right down. And then she turns over the last one. And wouldn't you know it, Duncan and Bo called it episode number two. Mm-hmm. Ren was a camp counselor, a.k.a. Owen. 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 <laughs> um, but we see him stand there. And the first thing that I th- thought when I saw it is, Ren looks old for a camp counselor. <laughs> yes. Yes. All the rest look like, well, look like they're in their early 20s. Ren looks like he's, you know, 35. Uh, Peter could own his own home. Probably. Probably. You know, probably. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, that's a, a common complaint with, you know, shows about. Yeah, but like Ren, looks, but like, Ren, Ren looks like he's served somewhere overseas. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Ren looks like he's been in the shit. He's um, come back haunted. By the ghosts of many people he's murdered. Uh, you know, he's got that thousand like, <laughs> yard stare. I think I'd be a really good camp counselor because I realized early on that no life, even a child's life, matters any any more than anyone else's. Hired. Um, <laughs> you, you sound like you have a good head on your shoulders. Oh yeah, my. I once held a severed hand, head in each hand. That was back yeah. in in the stand. Oh, you heard the like, so there we go. Hired good cardio can hold one in each hand. Um, you know, so yeah, like, human heads are heavy, <laughs> they are heavy, bro. they're the weight of a child anyway. Um, and <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so like Rennie's like, holy shit, and the audience, I imagine at this point, are like Duncan and Bo are, are probably catching up to Duncan and Bo. Let's just say they're all stupid, and yes. Like, if you take a second to think about this, if you take a second to think about this, right, Owen isn't real. Can't be, because our our characters have interacted with him, Uh supposedly, and no one remembers them as a fellow colleague camp counsellor from five years ago. So he can't be real. Like, just on, on that level, straight away, he can't be real. Which is what the show, well, it's not even what the show, the show's pushing it that he's the murderer yes. in this scene. Which, once again, why bother at this point? Yeah, I mean, you're we have an episode right. coming up. Yeah. We'll have an episode coming up next, and that's when it'll be revealed, and then everyone will have to try and survive in the last episode. But yeah, Rennie comes out, well, as she's packing all this up, Mark snaps out his flashback, and he hears the revving of an engine. Uh-huh. It's and a snowmobile, Duncan. It's a snowmobile that the distance this travels is maybe about what 20 meters before mm-hmm. it hits him. Yeah, it, it seems to hit a hundred miles an hour because the, the force in which Mark <laughs> whacks off the side of this building, which Rennie doesn't hear, by the way, Rennie's in this wooden shack uh, and doesn't hear one the sound of a motor or two, a human being bouncing off it. Um, which is kind of funny, but yeah, the, the, the killer, Judith. Hits Mark with the snowmobile. He bounces off uh-huh. the side of the building. Gun goes flat, flying. And the gun goes flying, but we don't see Mark die. And this is why I don't think Mark's dead. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, anyway, the next episode could cut to like him being sawn apart easily. Uh, but yeah, so um, Rennie sees this masked killer, goes off a running. Um, the killer shoots her because Chekhov's gun. Finally, we get the, he's got a gun. Yeah. Um, Shoots her twice and uh, bad shots as well. And she goes down and then the killer goes across, f- removes the paperwork because that'll probably be found later on. So we need to have that removed instead of destroyed like we should be doing. Um, and the episode finishes, Bo, 
with the sound of Rennie being run over and squelched. Yep. And yeah. And then credits. Uh, so Benny's we, not coming back. Well, but again, this is one of those things that we didn't see it technically. Yeah, but I think she, I think Mark is likely to come back. I don't think she's been shot a couple of times and driven over. So if she comes back, she's the Terminator. So, <laughs> you know I mean, like, I'm a learning computer. <laughs> like, literally, uh, that's the only way that that could work. It's the lesbian one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> so that's the, that's the end of the episode we are two episodes from the end and the show is still is still pushing maybe possibly red as a real person i mean if you think about it for two seconds he isn't but i think the show is still like maybe we've still got a couple of them yeah the insistence on it is what i find really funny <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like to me, it's I'd embrace it at this point. I'd embrace, well, like, I would have embraced it earlier, but at this point now, this is where I would have had the flashbacks. Yeah, I, I honestly, if you ended this episode with the discovery of Ren as the counselor and then did the you know, uh, 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 six sense thing of like, oh, yes, yeah. he, he's not real, and here are all the moments that prove that he wasn't real with with the conversations of the counselors talking earlier on about yeah they all pinned it on this guy owen who took his own life yeah yeah then uh, i you know uh I, like am i on board uh, maybe even, that's pushing even it, like but... she she finds a file we cut to a scene of judas sitting in a room talking to owen and then the camera pans around past the mirror and owen's not there yeah you know something like that anything other than we're going to stretch this into episode number seven for no reason at all because no one is buying it. Yeah, it, it's really dumb. It's yeah. really, really dumb. Um, uh, I mean, we don't have to make predictions because, no. <laughs> like, well, we do, know maybe we do. I yeah. think, I think the prediction is: Will the well? Let's let's try and make a prediction. Here. Do we think that? the show will definitively confirm that Ren is not real at the start of the episode or at the end, because I'm leaning towards the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree with that. I think they are going to take their sweet damn time. 45 minutes, they are going to hang on to this boy. <laughs> yeah, and like, the yes, it's going to be a second half, possibly last few minutes reveal. Yeah in the next episode which is uh, do, we, do we want to make out like a bold bold prediction so at the moment are we saying we now think don gets out we think peter gets out and do we think kira gets out are, are those are three kira for think, sure yeah i think kira definitely i do think peter's gonna get out uh which upsets me yeah so it could be a kira peter and it could be a thing where does Don get out? I, Don, I, if anything, Don is as culpable as it could be a thing else. where Don and and Mark Stroganoff go together. Maybe, maybe, yeah. You know, where I, it's I, like, I just I'm like at this point we've killed. I what I am super curious about is how this all plays in because my my thoughts now are that like Judith lost Owen, went to the cabin that he was happiest at um, when he was still alive and went up there as a sanctuary, as a den mother. Fine. Plagued by these, like, memories of, you know, seeing him because she's a bit fragile mentally. But she's up there and everything's fine and everything was going great until she heard that these camp counsellors were coming up and she found out who they were and that's when Ren started appearing to her. Yeah, Which would I think all that's why he's yeah. not he's he's not prevalent in the first episode much. He's like towards the end, I think he appears. Um, but yeah, I think that's the only way. But then once again, as you know, it's ha it's happenstance as opposed to planned. because uh, that's the only way that works for me. Like, because she's been up there for a while, there's no way that they would have known those kids were coming up. Yeah, so, I, I'm with you that this is a hey they. So she went up there to be close to the place where she lost her child. Yeah. And, and yes. And because 
there's too much of the hey is judith acting crazy everybody you know when yeah when you've seen them the characters see her talking to ren yeah and like even robin was like look we need to have a long conversation about you being you know cuckoo <laughs> that's why robin had to go bo. yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent that that's why robin had to go so yeah i i think yeah it's i mean it is that dumb that that is where we are with it it th this is how the show is going to end um yeah i yeah i'm, I'm trying to think if i've got a, a strong feeling about like i i think I think you're right. I think Peter will survive, but I think that's a real bummer. It's a total bummer because I he's like you said before, he's a nothing character. Yeah. He he's, hasn't he hasn't contributed anything since episode one where they filmed Andy dead. Yeah. It it's been real unfortunate uh yeah. to see that character just completely fall by the wayside. Yeah. Um all right, well, Duncan, before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on to the penultimate episode of Slasher in a short, short two weeks. Um, where can people find you? And uh, by the way, I listened to the the uh, latest episode of the podcast Under the Stairs with Baz laying out everything ahead of you guys. <laughs> and uh, you are ambitious, sir. Like you are, you are taking the coming of your child as if, like, well, you know. It'll come when it comes. And I I don't know if you know this about me, Bo, but I started my podcast under the stairs podcast about six months before my first child arrived. Uh, so that was already a known quantity, and that's when I decided I wanted to start a podcast. So, um, so yeah, that's we're gonna do it early. We're gonna get out of the way, and it's gonna be fine. Uh, to give people a, a peek behind the curtain, summer series as it stands right now is. 75% recorded, like all the episodes mm -hmm. basically take me through to the end of September. I'm recording with Bo Ransdell later today on his first appearance on the series, but you're recording the last one of those next weekend with me, and that's them all done. Yeah. So, um, so very excited for that. But yeah, Baz, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Baz has made his Bazoween announcement. He'll be returning in October for that. But if you're a fan of him, there's never been a better time to be a fan of the Baz. Brand new episode where I dropped with him on Thursday where he laid his plans out. Monday, an episode drops with him as part of the Russian Roulette franchise retro where he's talking about Scream. And then next Thursday, you get to hear more in-depth, detailed conversation between me and him on a certain movie called Forever Purge. So you get to hear us expand out on that movie more. Baz liked the movie. I disliked the movie. And you get to hear our thoughts on that on a hour-long episode where we go non-spoiler and then into a spoiler one. So he's going to be making ad hoc appearances over the next wee while as well, which I'm really looking forward to. So um, tons of that. Out with that, Summer Series is... Where are we? Uh, about two and a half weeks away from from episode one drop. In fact, just about two weeks. Two weeks on Monday till episode one drops of that series. So it's very, very exciting. exciting. It's it, honestly the best series I've done so far. The conversations have been absolutely incredible. And yeah, still to do my two with Bo. So uh, they're only going to get better for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, uh, I've that's, seen that's, a sneak that's, preview of you know some of the movies that are going forward and i'm very eager to hear how that happened uh yes 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 you you will you will um it, what was fun about uh, like what is that my favorite thing about recording these episodes is that everyone has an idea of what they think is going to go through when you're not on the show and everyone kind of has an idea on the show what they want to go through and very rarely does either happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we end up in positions where there is there is method to our madness for most of it. I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of glaring mistakes on the on the list as 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 my opinion goes in movies. But um, I have had I have had more say and more power on this season than I've had ever before. Uh, so. I've tried to use it where I can to make things feel a bit better. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still still five people on a recording. Um, 
and we all have completely different tastes. As you will find out tonight when you are frustrated at trying to get one of the movies you want to go through, through because everyone else is like, I don't like it. You're like, what do you mean you don't like it? It's amazing. Yeah. So uh, I, it's yeah. fun. It's been great. It has, but the quality of movies as a whole, though, have been intimidating, uh, just to say the least. So. There, Yeah, there are a couple on the list that we're talking about this evening that I'm like, I, you know. I, are these completely unassailable? I mean, we'll see, like you said, how the taste yeah, If run, not, but... If not these, what I think is yeah. the, the way that I feel with some of the titles on here where I'm like, if we can't all agree on this one, then what are we even doing on this recording? Right. So, you yeah. call yourself a movie fan. It's um, going to be good, man. It's going to yeah. be really good. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Yeah, yeah, like I, yeah. Because uh, I've been seeing all this chatter happen and I yeah. haven't been participating yet, it's really mm-hmm. felt like it's all been leading to this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very excited. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, by all means, everybody check out, uh, you know, t Collective, Podcast Over the Stairs. Yes. Uh, all of that stuff. It's all great. Um, Bobby, then, Duncan, I would say you can check out legionpodcasts.com where uh, we've got we've got all kinds of fun stuff happening. Um, uh, Hail Ming Power Hour. You might have heard that show. There's going to be new I, episodes I, of that. I have been on that show a couple of times. Yeah. I, I sent a voicemail in once uh, decrying you, Bo. Yeah. I stand well, by every word I said. As you should. Um, uh, so there's some of that going on. There's What You Watching with Jamie and Bo, which is me and the estimable Jamie Sammons uh, talking about movies ostensibly, but it's really just about a, a plumbing the depths of Jamie's mind. And, and seeing what dark and weird things lie there. Uh, and then Hero Hero Go Show uh, most recently did an episode on the silent film, A Page of Madness, uh, which is uh, kind of an essential film for um, just Asian cinema in general. And did you see that crit- uh, Criterion releasing Oni Baba? I did see that. I did see that Criterion trying to eke out every last penny out of me. Ooh, it's a tasty one there. I own that one. I've got a Blu-ray of that one. Eureka Classics put out in the UK. And I'll be honest, I I, I started looking and I'm like, I, I need two copies of this movie. Um, maybe. 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 Yeah, it's the you short know. answer to that question. <laughs> Arrow, Arrow will do that to you as well. Like yeah. they've been going back, like they've got the uh, uh, Dimogen series that they just put out. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> the, the, the struggles. <laughs> The struggle's <laughs> real, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, head over to uh, head over there. Uh, you can subscribe right off the main page to uh, the podcast um, catcher of your choice and and platform form of your choice. Uh, and really, Duncan, there's nothing left to say uh, except to uh, to thank everyone for listening and watching and and contributing questions and all that, and uh, to tell you uh, say good night, Duncan. And to tell you, uh, good night, Duncan. Ah, eerie. <laughs> You're, uh, speaking of, it's Donald Sutherland's birthday. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that long would work for the video. That's perfect. Long.